What is going on, gaming nerds? Welcome back to Midnight Gaming with Mystic Memory. Thanks for coming to the channel and hanging out. Hopefully, you guys are having an amazing day. I'm having a pretty decent day. It's midnight yet again. Yet again, we are back on Russian Fishing 4. It is the butt crack of dawn, yes, ladies and gentlemen, and we are going to talk about Bear Lake for beginners. Let's get started. Okay, so right off the bat, I need to give you guys a warning, all right? There's only three shops that are actually at this lake. So you need to get all of your gear, all of your bait, all of your gear, your rods, reels, and everything before you come here. Because nobody wants to see you jumping in the chat saying, hey, I forgot 200 bo uh, boilies and I need you guys to send me 200 boilies. Nobody's going to do that for you, so make sure you get all of your gear before you come here. On this lake, you've got a fish market, you've got an administration building so you can buy your maps, and then you've got your grocery store. Obviously, this has been doing, or obviously the Christmas event's going on, so I'm doing this during that event. This will be gone in probably a few days, uh, but the grocery store, administration building, and the fish market, and that is it, all right? So make sure you grab all your stuff before you get here. Where's the campsite? We're gonna go fish while I talk. The second thing that I need to warn you guys about is Bear is not a sustain, sustain, sustainable, wow, I can't talk tonight. Bear is not a sustainable fishing lake, period. It is not. It used to be. Um, it used to be the hot spot for every every type of carp that you want to fish and everything else. People used to come here for trophies. They used to get tons of money by carp fishing and everything else. But the devs, about, I would say about eight between eight to 10 updates ago, they decided, you know what? We don't want Bear to be the hot spot anymore for carp and everything. We want Amber Lake to be because Amber Lake has just came out and everything else and everybody was still coming to Bear. They wanted people to go out to Amber Lake, I do believe is what kind of what happened. So what they did was they kind of destroyed the frequency of the bite rate. Now I'm not talking about the frequency of how fast the fish bite. I'm talking about how often hot spots come up. Okay, and I think I actually forgot to put a clip on this. No, I did not. So basically the frequency of how, how, how fast the, the bite rates come up um, or hot spots show up on this lake are have been absolutely killed. Um, and this has made it so bear is not a sustain, sustainable um, fishing spot anymore for your money, your fish, or anything else, okay? So don't come here thinking, I just kind of want to warn you guys, don't come here thinking, oh, I'm going to make a ton of money, I'm going to buy all of this gear and stuff, and I'm only going to fish bear until I skip over like Volkov River and I get into Severski Donets or Sur and stuff like that. It's not going to happen. The fact of the matter is, is bear is not sustainable as a fishing spot because they've killed the frequency of the bite rate. We used to get bite rates very very often and now what happens is we have to wait two weeks three weeks sometimes even an entire month before a hot spot shows up on bear and then once it finally does show up um it goes on for about a week or two i would say and then after that it goes completely dead again and it goes back to not being sustainable okay so i don't want you guys to see this video and go oh wow man i'm just gonna go out to bear and i'm just gonna just make a whole bunch of money and stay there it's not gonna happen it's not gonna work um so unfortunately yeah just kind of expect that you come out here i would time it if i could i would try and time it to where i see oh i'm out of ground bait i would try and, and time it to where i see a lot of people in chat saying, hey, bear's good. You can use this on bear. Bear's picking up and everything else. And then maybe start looking into getting some of your gear and stuff like that. Next, let's talk about ground bait and clips. When it comes down to all of the spots that are on bear, your ground bait, you don't really necessarily need slingshots you may want to start considering getting into slingshots at this point in time uh, slingshots that do like uh, you can do boilies if you want you can do one for ground bait you there isn't a ton of spots for really ground bait to be thrown here you can throw the majority of it with hand with your hand because the clips here 90 percent of the time when you do a clip here on your reels and, and rods the clip is going to be about 
a clip 20. 15 to 20 is gonna be your distances, okay? So when it comes down to that, you don't have to really worry about purchasing you know, a slingshot or anything else like that, but you may wanna start looking into getting them uh, because there is about two, two or three spots that you may actually want one. Uh, and at that point, you may actually want to consider getting into the slingshots. So that being said, when it comes down to bear, bear is exactly like combining Oldberg and Amber Lake. You've got the carp from Amber Lake, and then you've got the baits and stuff that you can also use from Oldberg. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could use uh, boilies, a whole bunch of boilies for, you know, mirror carp, uh, 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 leather carp, black carp. A lot of people like to come here for black carp. Um, you can sometimes get tench on them and barbel and stuff like that. But then you can turn around and you can also use like potato pieces and cheese and stuff like that where you would normally use those back at Oldberg. Okay. So when it comes down to, when it comes down to like kind of the style of bear, it's a cross between Oldberg and Amber Lake. It kind of gets you prepared for Amber, but you can also fish kind of like you used to do on Oldberg. Okay. Um, when it comes down to fish, tench, golden tench, leather carp, mirror carp, common carp, black carp, whole bunch of different types of carps, and that's all, and barbel, and you're gonna be going for barbel as well. Um, barbel, you can, if you want, you can target them if they're active, but you're never ever going to hear any any carp fishermen complain or or moan and groan about catching a barbel. Barbel are some of the the best fish to catch. They're small. They're easy to reel. It really amber or really bear lake a gibble. Awesome. That was cool. Um, barbel are some of the most expensive selling fish and the lightest fish. They're uh, they their trophies are about eight kilograms eight nine kilograms something like that so if if the barbell are active and you target them you can come here and make a lot of money um, if you can find a spot that's a golden tench spot and you have bait that the tench are biting on that's not being bitten on by grassies or regular carp then you can target tench as well and you can target them with lighter gear so that so when it comes down to the fish don't come here for gibble or crushing don't come here float fishing unless you've got a match rod and you're going for big carp with match rods and stuff like that leave all of that back at Oldberg and stuff just don't come here for that you're gonna be carp fishing basically when it comes down to coming here okay now the first thing I'm going to do is uh, let's do this. When you go into when you come to Bear, more than likely you're going to be coming off of Quarry Lake. You're going to open up Volkov and you're going to open up Bear. In my opinion, I would suggest getting all of your gear for Volkov River for trolling and going trolling there, and then start passively getting carp gear or f heavy feeder gear that you could use on bear if you want to try bear out if not you still want to get that the heavier gear anyway so when you get up to like amber then you can start using it up there okay so i highly suggest just staying on volkov and doing the trolling like i said before and i'll say it again bear is not sustainable as a fishing spot because it just doesn't have enough active spots over time so to start off with when you come off of quarry lake more than likely a lot of you're going to be looking at a setup that's considerably close to this 20 kilogram load capacity for tuna feeder that you were using over on quarry lake to catch uh, burbot and a nine nine kilogram or higher uh real you can use the sputnik or you can use the pulsar uh you're probably using either if you're like a returning player you can use the old proton pro and stuff like that and you're coming off of quarry lake with this kind of gear setup you're gonna have a few people here and there say oh yeah you can go ahead and take this setup and use it on bear and you can catch fish that is true but i don't recommend this mainly because the reel is a little bit just too light it's that simple if you do decide to go with something like this i would highly suggest staying around a size six hook to a size eight hook keep your fish your carp lower in weight if you can you're going to be getting you know one two three four five six kilogram um carp and stuff like that when you get up to the size fours you can start catching trophies you can start hooking into trophies when you get up in the size ones one zeros and stuff like that you'll be pulling in kill 10 kilogram 12 14 15 kilogram fish and a lot of those are going to be those stupid grassies okay 
We hate grassies. There's a reason we call grassies or grass carp grass holes because they fight like monsters. And then when you get them in, you weren't expecting them to be so light. Okay. So when it comes down to a possible setup like this, I don't recommend it. The fact of the matter is, is you pull in one, you hook into one of those, you know, 12 to 14 kilogram uh, fish, you're going to be fighting it longer than I would like to fight them. And when you finally get it in, you're going to be doing a considerable, a considerable amount of damage to your friction brake. Um, I was here recently with this type of a setup just to try it out, just to make sure that this is still how I felt about it. And it's still how I feel to, uh, how I feel about it. Plain and simple. It's just a little bit too light for me. I ended up fighting grassies too much. I ended up fighting too long on the fish to get them in. And when I did get them in, I only went about mm, four, maybe five, 12 to 15 kilogram fish. And then I had to leave and go repair my reels. Okay. However, if you do decide to come here and you just want to try it out, 20 kilograms rod, nine kilogram or above Sputnik Pulsar, um, you know, Saber 60 will work here. You can do a uh, 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 the Proton Pro 15 kilogram line. If you can, I would highly suggest because with this this type of line, you only get 223 meters on it. You need more line, plain and simple. I would suggest trying to go for the snake braided line, and that'll be, I believe, 0.24 millimeters. You'll get more, you'll get more line on your reel. Um, when it comes down to your weights, you can either use a Paternostro rig. You can, you know, switch it over to a basic bottom and use a basic bottom or an inline rig. Uh, the weights. 40 it doesn't really matter because it's not a, there's no drift here there's no river it's a lake so 40 50 60 kilogram or 60 gram uh, weights would be absolutely fine with your classic mix your your ground baits and stuff like that as you can see bear is not active we just came off of a very high bite rate two weeks and i wanted to see if there were fish still here so as of right now, it looks like it's dead, so I don't suggest coming here as of January 16th. As I was saying, ground baits. If you're going to target barbel, there is a barbel mix here, and this is it right here. Personally, this is, in my opinion, this is a basic barbel mix. If you're going to target barbel, this gear setup is absolutely fantastic for targeting barbel um and targeting you know tench because they get a, a golden tench regular tench they get up to around eight uh four kilograms stuff like that uh this is fantastic for targeting that stuff as long as you're not using a bait that regular carp are going to bite into um so when it comes down to your ground bait you can use the barbel mix here okay you can use your tench mix which is right here or you can use your basic carp ground bait. Now, this is if you don't have ground bait leveled. This is absolutely fine. You can use one of these basics. But here's what I do. I come into these and I look at these. I see what the ingredients are. I go and buy them. And then I and then I, I add more to it. So as you can see with this one, you got sunflower seeds, maggots, clay, and coriander. So what I would actually do with this one, I was going here and I would go into sunflower seeds. Where are my sunflower seeds? Maggots. Uh, clay and then I would go down to here and do the coriander and then I would add to it and this is what I like to call my ultimate barbel or ultimate tench, tench mix if my main bait on here is like cheese that I'm using to try and catch catch fish I could go down here and I could use I don't know if I have any basic yeah here's the basic um, regular cheese that you would get from like the grocery store or you could go in and you could get the really nice cheese from Cory Lake. Now one of the things that I really like to do that I found works great for bottom feeding fish is instead of doing two types of cheese, I always add an egg because for some reason all of the bottom feeding fish really like eggs. I always find a little bit better of a bite rate or an attractant rate when it comes down to ground bait and adding an egg in there. So when it comes to you know bottom fish and stuff like that, I always add an egg. So I would do something like this. Take your basic ground baits and add something like this in there and it would be a little bit better for you. It looks like we might have had a bite on number three. No, it's gone now. Um, so that's what it comes down to when it comes down to ground bait. And I said before, you might want to consider looking at your 
uh, your catapults or your slingshots for ground baits and possibly getting one of those. You don't have to get the expensive one, you know, 400 silver, something like that, and you can go ahead and use those. But you can also use for your ground bait just your regular hand. Uh, what was I going to do? Let's see. We're going to do cocoa. I think we got cocoa and cream. So this is, yeah, so I could do just regular carp mix. Uh, so yeah, big head, there's carp with egg. So you can do 120% throw on your arm and that'll be 20 meter clip, basically. Okay, so you don't actually have to have a slingshot, okay? So when it comes down to this type of a feeder setup, I don't suggest it, but if you're gonna do it, maybe you could use you know potatoes and cheese and target barbel and tench and stuff like that. And this is kind of the setup that I would recommend if you're going to absolutely do it and ignore my warning that it's probably not going to be the greatest for you. However, what I do suggest is something like this. Now, I don't want you guys to think that you're only doing this setup for Bear Lake because you're not. You can absolutely take this entire setup that I'm about to show you and use it over on Amber. Okay, and it'll be absolutely fantastic. This is literally a beginner setup for Amber Lake. You can catch trophy carp with this. I have done it myself. I've caught trophy mirrors, trophy um, uh, common carp, and trophy leathers with this exact setup. Okay, so to start off with, it's the Model 1 feeder rods. You don't need a carp rod to fish for carp. Feeders actually work really well. I highly suggest a load capacity of 29 or higher. 30 kilograms, 40 kilograms if you can. You absolutely don't have to use this Model 1 if you don't want to. If you decide you want to use a carp rod instead, you can jump over to this style of carp rod. This is the Fortuna Carp 360XXH. It has 40 kilograms on it, which is considerably higher, you know, 10 kilograms than the feeder rod. You can use this if you want as a carp fishing rod. I absolutely love this rod. This is the highest, most expensive rod you can get on a carp rod before the carp rods get ridiculously expensive. I think this one is around 1,900 silver. The next one above this one is like 9,000 silver. It's ridiculous, the price change. So this is the highest one that you can buy before they get ridiculously expensive. So if you wanted to, you could take this setup right here, replace this Model 1 uh, rod with the Fortuna carp rod that I just showed you and then use this setup right here and you'd be absolutely fine. When it comes down to your reel, Beluga Narga 8000, Alpha 8000, or your um, your Caliber HSV reels are all going to be absolutely fine. I highly suggest using the Snake Power Braid. This is one of the smallest millimeter diameter braided lines at 28 kilograms that you can possibly get. It is somewhat expensive, but it is worth the money because you can get almost 300 meters of line on your Beluga Narga. You can get over 300 meters on your HSV and fairly close to 300 or 290 on your Alphas. All three of those reels will absolutely work and I highly suggest the Snake Braid Power Braid. You can use this on Amber as well. 28 kilograms, I do not suggest going below 28 kilograms. If you want, you can do the, do the 25 kilograms, but you're going to end up getting a 0.34 I think it's a 0.34 millimeter so you're going to actually get less line on there with a lower capacity so i wouldn't suggest that i would suggest this power snake braid even though it is close to 200 silver it is what i suggest when it comes down to using a oopsie when it comes down to using a classic pop-up rig here you're going to end up using either a classic pop-up rig i'm going to catch this nope I'm going to try and catch this fish. Watch it be another freaking gibble. We're going to pull this in because I want to show you guys what you're probably going to be using. Is that a common? It is a common. Okay, so with this, you're on bear, you're going to be using probably the classic pop-up rig or you're going to be using the classic hair rig. Um, you could use the snowman if you wanted to do one pop-up and one um, sinking uh, boily but most of the time you're going to use the classic hairs and the pop-up rigs. Uh, with the classic hairs, you can use pellets, but it's mostly sinking boilies that you're going to be using with it. With the uh, 
classic pop-up rig you're going to be using you could use corn like with what we've got on here as the bait i've got a pop-up boilie as well as a corn this was the most recent bear lake baits and when it comes to bear lake baits the fish here when it comes to boilies and stuff they like sweet baits okay so they'll like strawberry esterberry um peach uh, uh cocos and cream this is the most recent combination um the old pal uh cocos and cream flavored um uh, artificial corns and then this is the pop-up boilies and then like the cocoa nectar okay so strawberry sometimes will work banana will sometimes work so you're going to be using most of the time probably either sinking uh the classic the classic hair rig uh, right here or the classic pop-up rig when it comes down to this type of a setup okay so yeah basically that's about it when it comes down to baits and when it comes down to your rigs uh when it comes down to this you're going to be using lead cores when it comes down to your carp your carp hair rigs you're going to be using lead cores this is the most expensive lead core that you can purchase off of the off of the the tackle shop now to be honest with you i hope they add in lead core crafting I think that would be really really cool but as of right now this is the most expensive one it is a camel a camouflage one um, when you do lead cores you want to make sure your lead core is as close to your lines load capacity as possible a lot of people mistake their lead cores as a second leader to break before your main line you shouldn't be looking at this this is a weighted line it's used to help you cast a far, a far distance and it's used to help your gear sink to the bottom it is not there to be a safety net for your main line so you want to try and get your your kilogram weight as close as you can to your main line weight i wouldn't go over i would go as close as you can to this to this weight as you can see mine is 27.2 that's the highest i could get compared to 28 kilograms okay and this is the one that i highly suggest everybody gets because it's camo works fantastic and its color is under the clay and that's pretty much works for all of carp pretty much when it comes down to your weights there's a couple of different types you can get this tr uh, trill trillobs clay colored make sure it's clay colored so you basically want to go into your tackle shop you want to go into your sinkers for bottom feeding and you want to type in the word clay in search and you'll get a whole bunch of different clay colored any one of those will work they're absolutely fine personally i like the helen van zandit seal gripped clay sw70 mk1 mark ii i'm just kidding about the sk1 mark ii they're flat and you can use them on a river and when it comes down to flowing river they will they don't have a high profile so they'll sink to the bottom they'll lay flat and they grip so i like using these on something that has a drift but i've also used the uh, trillob clay before they work absolutely great you can use the pyramid sinker if it's clay colored um, that works absolutely great as well uh, when it comes down to weights 60 grams minimum in my opinion i use 70 because it allows me to get a lot of weight on there so i could cast out at a far distance uh but i don't go above that because then i'm i've got this huge massive weight on the end of it that just is too much weight i really don't need that much weight so i usually suggest when it comes down to carp fishing around 70 grams um unless you're going for really like bigger fish later on you can use you can use these exact same setups for um for fishing on actuba for uh, uh wild carp and for buffalo and stuff like that these aren't just carp rods setups these are the feeder rods whether you're using a carp rod or a feeder rod you can use either of those on any type of fish that you really want to it's you're not limited to catching carp on carp rods it's that simple same thing with feeder rods so when it comes down to like your weights and stuff like that you know 70 70 grams is probably the what what i really like and i can use that for multiple different lakes and stuff like that um and not just for carp lakes like on bear lake um okay so when it comes down to your leader on this one here let's go ahead and cast this back out on this setup here that i just did this one has a fluorocarbon leader fluorocarbon is absolutely fine 
Okay, I wouldn't go on this with this one. I wouldn't go below 13 because you're going to want as much weight as you can if you're going to be going for carp or barbel or anything else. Fluorocarbon is fine when it comes down to carp fishing. So if you want to use fluorocarbon, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with it. And anybody who tells you different doesn't know what they're talking about. But most people, when it comes down to carp fishing, they want to use a braided line. This is something that I made myself. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the leaders here. If I can find my old leader, eh, there's classic feeder leader. Okay, this is what I used to use. This here, where's the 27? This here is what I would use on the, the, the setup that I'm showing you. It's a 27.2 kilogram braided line. It is, I believe it's green. I don't know what color it is. It's one that you actually buy directly off of the tackle store. Braided line, 27.2 kilograms. Uh, this one looks like I actually made this one. There it is, right? It's this one right there. My apologies, it's this one right here. Carp X braided leader green, 60, 60 pounds. You can purchase this right off directly off of the tackle store. It works absolutely fine. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. There's a lot of people that are out there that are like, oh, you have to get a red braid. You don't. You can absolutely use these and it works absolutely fine. Okay. And it is like 20 centimeters in your length, stuff like that. When it comes down to making your own leader and you start getting into that, there is one that I highly suggest 60, 60 centimeter length material. You're going to go into your braided lines, actually go into your tackle shop, go into your accessories, go into leader accessories, and you're going to type in red. And it's going to pull up this right here. This is your red camo. This is what a lot of people will switch over to when they're making their own 60 centimeter leader. Depending on how big you want it, your swivels need to be around the same size so if i have a load capacity on here of 27 i probably want a load capacity on my swivel of 30. Uh, where are my 30s here's a 31 that i will use probably right there if i'm using the other kind which is a little bit bigger this one's a 31.7 i would still use the 31.5 because it's close enough okay so this is the red camo that I highly suggest when it comes down to use if you want to make your own leaders and you want a longer one use this bad boy right here okay next your hooks really depends on what you want to get you can start catching trophies at, at, at four if you're a little bit nervous maybe start out a four then move up to a one um, move up to a two I usually use around ones on Bear Lake and then when I get to Amber I use twos uh, so that's basically on these. I try try and get you know four to five star hooks so you can hook into the fish and keep them. Um, and then, like I said before, when it comes to your baits, sweets usually work really well on well on Bear Lake. Now let's talk about the differences between your your feeder rods and your carp rods. As you can see, if you look at the difference, the one on the left is the feeder rod, the one on the right are carp rods. The feeder rods are longer, which means you're going to get a further cast with them. The further the 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 cast difference is going to be about 10%. So if you cast out your feeder rod at about 50% for the carp rod to match it, you would probably need about 60%. Not that big of a deal in change, okay? When it comes down to feeder rods, they are longer. However, they are also a lot more flexible than carp rods. So when it comes down to feeder rods, they're really flexible. They have a very, a fairly quick action, okay? Meaning when you're fighting a fish and you're holding your rod up and it's bending like crazy and your, your fish is turning and running and bumping and thumping all over your rod, your rod can cushion those bumps and thumps and, and bumps and stuff like that that the fish is doing to your rod. So you're not doing... Um, you're not really risking as much damage to your rod and reel and line and stuff like that. On top of that, your feeders also have these, these quiver tips. Now these quiver tips basically are a sensitive tip that lets you know when a lighter fish is biting. So they're more sensitive than the main part of your rod. Okay, so if you're going for something that's like super, super small, like a rough, you'd probably want to put it down to a 14 gram. When you're going for carp, you want to put it to an, to an 84 gram. Now, the reason you want to put it for to an 84 gram is because of the weight of the fish, yes, but also 
the the more stiff you go on the quiver tip the better your casting accuracy will be with your with your feeder rods okay so when you're going for big fish and you're casting way out there make sure that you max this out and keep this maxed out when it comes down to your carp rods your carp rods are shorter but they're more stiff and they have a lot slower action but they're super heavy when it comes down to their power meaning you can lift up on them you put a lot of pressure on the fish that you're trying to pull in and the fish has a hard time fighting against all of that pressure that you're pulling on on the fish they're shorter they're stiffer and they're very very powerful that's why they're called a carp rod you're fishing for very heavy fat bodied fish okay so that's kind of the difference when it comes down to your your carp rods and your feeder rods you can feeder rod with a carp rod or you can feeder you can carp fish with a feeder rod or you can carp fish with a carp rod you can take your carp rods and you can go sturgeon fishing with them if you want you can go you know um big head fishing you can go black black carp fishing it doesn't matter you can take all of these and use on different fish if you want to but in the end that's kind of just the difference between the two all right okay so now that we've got pretty much all of our gear set up and ready to go i'm going to finish pulling in this stupid fish right here what am i on we're on 28 we got a good decent sized fish here i'm going to finish pulling then this in and then we'll start talking about some of the spots you may want to start out fishing here when it's actually hot we'll be right back all right what do we got we finally got it in oh look it's a wonderful grassy See, this is one of the biggest problems you're going to have with Bear Lake. There are grassies freaking everywhere, and it's so annoying. It is so bad how bad they are. I came down here with one of those lighter setups recently, and I tried to just target Barbel. I must have caught like 15, 15 kilogram grassies on cheese. You don't get that on cheese very often. It's really freaking annoying. Okay, so... I think I've got a helicopter over over the top, going over the top of me. Um, I'll be right back. I don't want that in the background noise. All right, let's talk about hot spots. This is the North Pole. This is Antarctica. This could be the South Pole too. This is where nobody lives. This is where nobody wants to fish. Why? Because there's very, very, very rarely any fish hot spots up here. Every now and then, there might be a barbel spot that comes hot up here. But for the most part, to be honest with you guys, it's very, very rare that you get any fish that are up here. Most of your hot spots are going to be down here in the center or at the southern part of it. Okay. So the first part I want to talk about is actually right by the camping spot. As you can see, if I turn around, there's your camping spot. We got a loud magpie in the background. This one is one of my favorites because there's one, two, three, four spots that you can cast right here. Okay. So the starting one is basically on well it's kind of two in a way it's on the other side of these weeds right here or it's out in front over here you're going to be at a clip 20 and you're going to be casting either directly through these weeds or casting just to the right of these weeds out here as you can see with the clip 20 you're only right about there that's a lot further than i thought it was that is a lot further than what i thought it was that's why I usually try and cast through the weeds right over here. So let's do that real quick. So I can pretty much cast right through here if I can. And then it'll land just on the other side of the weeds right here. If you wanted to, you could actually come over here too. And you could cast right right along the weeds right, right over here. So this is around a 20 clip, sometimes a 17. It really depends on where you want to hit. If you want to be really close to the end of the weeds, I'd probably go with a 15 clip. Like I said before, all your clips on bear are going to be around... 17 15 to 20 okay my second one over here is a 23 clip or a 22 clip we'll do a 22 clip and it's you're going to be casting out along those that wall right there so let's see how close we can actually get so you're going to drop it right in front of those weeds right there okay now with that one you can still throw with your arms when it comes down to ground bait and get close enough where you're still going to be attracting fish because ground bait gives you a two meter two meter radius when it comes down to how far it attracts fish from. So that's the second spot and all the way along up and down this area right here, you can go ahead and fish right there. The third place is the exact same thing, but it's over here along that wall of, of weeds right there, if you will, okay? So 
22, 23 clip rod along there works. Now, if you're not getting anything and you're really getting pissed off and frustrated like I sometimes do, take your clip off. Now you see right between, right at that, that stand right there, that hunter stand, there's a channel right there. And I don't know if you can actually see it on the map. There's a channel that's right up into there that these two weed walls separate. 120 clip, not even a clip, but 120%. Get it all the way as far as you can up in that channel. One of the biggest benefits you can find when it comes to Bear Lake or like October River is the channels. When you've got two parts of the river that are meeting each other and you it makes a channel like this, a lot of times, especially in October, a lot of times when a, one river meets another one, you'll get a lot of fish that will sit there in that channel and will hang out in that channel. So this is one of my favorite spots to try is this channel right here. All right, now we're gonna move all the way down to the south. All right, so as I'm moving down to the south, I'm coming across a little bit of terrain that I wanna talk about when it comes down to hot spots. You see this patch, this patch of grass out here? This is a patch that's floating out in the middle of the water. When it comes to barbels, a lot of times the luckiest parts of this lake that I found barbels at is around these big patches of grass. So with right here, you may want to try like a 20, 23 and try to hit in front of those big grass patches that are sitting out into the middle of the river. On top of that, when it comes down to the description of what barbels like, they like deeper areas. So you may want to consider hitting like this three, five hole right here or this four, five hole right here, hit them right in the center. But most of the time, in my opinion, most of my hot spots when it comes down to barbels, and I've been aiming for barbels, and I know there's hot spots on here for barbels, um, for a fact, I'll go to these, these islands, these weed islands, and I'll cast directly in front of them. Sometimes I'll even try to get behind them if I can get one that's close. Like, see, there's one right over there. I'll try and get behind it and try and actually cast behind it if I possibly can. So when it comes down to your barbels, on here look for the deep holes try the deep holes and then look for these patches of weeds and stuff like that and try and hit them right in front of your weed right or try and get your bait to, to land right in front of the weeds when it comes down to barbels other than that most of the time when it comes to barbels you're going to be catching them when you're going for carp anyway so there's not really any reason unless you're targeting targeting them specifically to try to go for them because you're going to get them when you're carp fishing anyway. All right, let's keep moving. All right, so it's early the next morning. It got too late. I had to change or I had to wait for the next morning to come by. Just as a heads up, the last area that I just showed you when I talked about barbel hunting, uh, I don't even remember where it was. Up here, I think it was. That's actually a tench area too. And it's a clip 20 if you want to go for the tench that's, that are up there. Okay, this is the next spot here. Now, when it comes down to Bear Lake, there's a whole bunch of, of the same spots that everybody tries when you come down. I'm just showing you all of these spots. The rest is gonna be up to you. Um, I guess I could probably throw all of the, the spots up and the clips up on the screen as of right now. Uh, but here's another one right here. This is 5634. As you can see, we're right by the 3-5 hole. You can either go on the other side of this tuft of, tuft of grass over here, you can go in the center just on the other side of these uh, these lilies right here or you can actually go over here on the 3-5 hole and when it comes down to 5634 the clip is around 1520 I would try 20 if you can you can also go just to the right of this tuft of grass over here so this one's got a considerable amount of, of, of places as well however there is another another tuft of grass, the tall grass out there that you may want to try for. I believe that's a 25 clip. It could be a 30, 30 clip if you wanted to try out there. But if you don't have the ground bait distance to be throwing it by hand, you may want to switch over to a pattern astral rig or whatever um, before you do that one. Okay, we are moving on to... Uh, I believe, are we going down to the, no, we're going down to 5533. Now, 5533 is probably one of the most popular ones when it comes down to recently uh, being, did I pass it already? I usually know it by a bush that's over on the right-hand side. It's usually the one that 
is the most popular when people first start to to come here they try this first let me see if i can find the stupid thing first okay so it's right here now the one that we just came from was right over here so this one's just right here this is the most recent most popular one when it came down to uh this most recent hot spot that just barely came out it's eclipse 17 okay and you want to just cast right on the other side of these of this tuft, tuft, tuft of grass over here I'm gonna do all three and let's see if there's actually anything that's actually biting over here I don't think there is I think this this most recent hot spot is actually dead and bear has gone back to its dead state again we'll go ahead and, and, and do that right there I usually can tell this place by this bush right here looks kind of like a V um, and I watched America Jake come over here and hide behind it too it was kind of funny so I, that's kind of how i recognize this spot but this is for 30 uh 55 31 um and it's actually a pretty good one you're pretty much around a 17 clip uh again and let's go ahead and head down to the next one which is my favorite spot now you can try a lot of the different different areas down here but i don't see a lot of people that are actually really catching anything down here the one that I really like the most is this one right here. And this is what I call the the beaver dam because, well, there's a beaver dam right there. That's that that's a beaver dam. Okay, if I pull out my spot rod because I can't use any other rods right now. All along this small tuft of grass right here, if you can land directly in front of it, I believe it's a 23 clip. If you can land directly in front of it, I've had a lot of luck with uh, tench, golden tench, regular tench, barbels, as well as regular carp here. You can catch pretty much everything right there in front of that, directly in front of that little tuft of grass. And of course, if there's nothing biting there, you can always move along this tuft, tuft of grass all the way over here as well. I have tried fishing, you know, around the beaver dam and stuff like that. I haven't caught anything around the beaver dam, but you see how this is a channel over here. This is another thing that you may want to try is doing a full 120% cast in here because this again is a channel. And remember I said about channels, channels in this game are really, really good because you got fish that are swimming up and down channels. And sometimes people will try this spot right here, but instead they'll they'll fish on the other side of this tuft of grass. They'll just cast through the tuft of grass and land on the other side. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Bear Lake for you. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, hit the like button. If you didn't, don't hit it. Just make sure no matter what you do, subscribe. Thanks for coming out the channel. I really appreciate it. Keep gaming. Keep doing it at midnight. Have a blast. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Have a good one. And bye-bye.